but I've always been a massive fan. And then I had a, a second cousin um, called Ben McLean, and he got involved in a fight with a guy called Roy Shaw, and they were they were called unlicensed fights. The governor, of course. Yeah, the governor. Yeah, was called. Ben they were called unlicensed fights, but they actually weren't licensed by the Boxing Border Patrol. They had, you know, they were legal. They weren't illegal. And they, were, they wore gloves and so forth, but they were, I mean, a pretty mo mediocre uh, as far as, you know, the, the quality. Uh, Shaw was an ex-professional and Lenny never had a pro fight. And, if, and we, I went along with my uncle to see his first fight and he hit Roy Shaw and wobbled him. It was in a place called Sinatra, spelled with a C, in Croydon, you know, in that club. And he, he clipped him, he legs dips, and that was it. And then he never threw another punch and just laid, laid on the corner in the corner ropes, like across his arms, and he went, go on, hit them. And Roy Shaw must have hit him about 60 times on the chin, and eventually he just fell down, like we're sitting there, you know, you know, stupid is that? Anyway, after my uncle said to him, you know, ridiculous, how you let somebody you said him, you know, doing that, he just senses, why did you do it? And he, he, he wasn't fit or anything. And they eventually re agreed to rematch in the same place. And uh, so I wound, I wound up, don't even ask me how, I wound up in his corner and with, with my uncle and my uncle and myself and John, Johnny Ball, we, uh, we worked the corner, he worked his corner, and he, he knocked him out. He knocked out Roy Shaw, I mean, absolutely knocked him out. They knocked him down the first time, I think they came up to about 30, and then he knocked him, got up, then he knocked, then, he, then, he, then the bell went to a big break. Then he knocked him through the ropes, but anyway, that was it. So next minute, Lenny's in the Lenny's in the driving seat of the so-called unlicensed boxing, and, and some of it was pretty awful. I mean, yeah. It was, but I didn't know any different. You know, I wasn't, you know, promoted. I didn't know about the medical aspects and so forth. And sport, I didn't know anything. And then um, they was going to have a, like I said, one apiece. They was organising a rubber match. We had a meeting in the fellow's office called Alex Steen. And uh, only sidekick uh, Joe Parr was Joe Parr, was Joe Parr, Jim and Stan met with them, and uh, <clears throat> they wanted that they offered us. I, I was quite shocked what they were, I didn't know what they were getting paid, and then they mentioned it. I said, Why would he want to fight fight you for that? You know, he's just beat, beat, you know, beat him, you know, pay more. And then they said, Well, that's what it is. I said, That would be Jerry, he's, he's, he's in the driving seat. I said, Well, good deal. We'll pay you that money. We'll pay you a bit more, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, there's a big argument, and that was that. So we went off and next minute organised a show for Lenny to fight at the Rainbow Theatre. And we thought this fellow called Solly Francis would come from Hillfoot. He worked on Club Door or something. And that's that's basically how it all came about. And, and I didn't want to. I didn't want nothing to do with it. We were. I mean, we weren't doing for money, and everything went to went to Lenny. Who, by the way, you know, Lenny was. I mean, it's got this sort of myth that's been built up around it. And remember, I, I, know, I knew him since he was a kid. I remember he used to work with a window cleaner, the century, new century window cleaning company down in, in Hoxton, where he come from. And uh, Lenny was a big bloke. You know, when he was he was that size when we were kids. Yeah. You know, when, when people were kids, he was a terrible bully. He was a bully. Well, he went not the nicest guy in the world. He was funny. He had a good sense of humor. But he was a terrible bully. And. Uh, you know, I, I worked to my, my uncle so he wanted to help, look out, you know, help him. And we uh, <coughs> we put the show on, and it was, it was no one knew what they was doing. I remember on the night of the show, it was about six o'clock at night at the Rainbow Theatre, which used to be the Astoria up in Fidbury Park, in Islington, that um, there was no gloves. Something like that. Funk, and we were early, I remember early Fossil Ball, big suitcase full of gloves there. So that was how, how well organised it was. Yeah. No one <laughs> moved on a bit. Just okay. thrown in the deep end, and that, and that was it. And uh, I sort of got bitten by a little bit bitten by the bug. And after a few of those shows, I got a bit, um, say, disillusioned. But it was what it was. It weren't going anywhere. It was a certain level. We, you know, we formed a new uh, uh, an organisation called the National Boxing Council. Had proper medi medical medical uh, Checks. Checks and, and regulations brought in. We tried to join the WBA and we're that close to not becoming affiliated to it because the board control would only have anything to do with WBC in those days alone. And uh, anyway, progress. And eventually I got an invite to be on the scene to take out a promoter's license. That's what I did. When was that? What year? 
I think my first fight was about 1980. 18, As in board license? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've done the other stuff I've done for a few years, so I was doing it for probably when I was about 23, which is 24. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.